Bye, Brigade. There's a fire on Botany Road at the Swadlings Warehouse. I can see the flames coming out of the roof. How large is it? Um, it's, it's getting bigger and bigger. It's well and truly on its way now. It's 6am and an entire inner city block is burning. in these front-facing units is to get them all out and move them out the back. Yep. Everyone's Nearby office buildings and apartments are evacuated and the area shut off. <laughs> Fireys are converging on the scene from all over Sydney. Among them is the crew from Station 62. What we're heading to is a, a structure fire at a timber yard in, uh, in Alexandria. Yeah, we've got a little bit of traffic to get through, but we should be there pretty soon. There's no need for Troy to check for directions. The dense plume of smoke announces this is the big one. The Swadlings fire is now an inferno. An eighth alarm has been called. There are 100 firefighters and 20 trucks on the scene, as well as a team of new recruits from the local training college. Fighting a fire like this one is akin to a military operation. The first arriving firefighters were literally chased out of the building by flames, called for backup. As you can see, we have the whole block on fire. It's situation critical as 62 arrives. The pumpers are running out of water. The biggest problem at the moment is we're just trying to find enough water to get on there. Crews are heading down the adjoining streets, picking up different uh, water mains so we can get enough water to put the fire out. The hardware store is full of paint thinners, pool chemicals and LPG tanks. Those bangs and pops could be the result of any one of those products exploding. But the biggest threat is right out front. Now, what I want to point out is an LPG, which is being protect, protected oh, okay, there. The big one, yeah. Okay. You can see there's a large flame up yeah. in there. If that gas tank blows, it'll send burning metal and bricks flying everywhere. Sydney Collins, we have a sprinkler head off at level one in the uh, Pacific International Valentine Street. isn't always a fiery friend, as the crew from 27 is about to discover. Is the sprinkler still running? Yeah, it's running. The water is like... It's high tide on the first floor of the Pacific International. All right. Which room are we going to? Steve here was using the sprinkler head in his room as a clothesline. Holy hell. Now he has serious water views. Oh, well, Hazy checks to see if the window's open, while Rowie inspects the newly installed water feature. Oh, Room six is a washout, but Rowie's about to turn the tide. Yes! Yeah. Yeah, it's dropping off. What happened? I shut the floor off. You're a marvel. Situation is Rowie and I are soaking wet. We've got about an inch of water through this whole unit and out into the corridor. So what we're going to do now is we shut the floor off. So we'll um, replace the sprinkler head and then we'll get our water back up and do the David Jones carpet cleaning gig. Now that Rowie isn't operating in cyclonic conditions, the sprinkler head is a quick fix. That's... There's always something funny, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> I love this job. While Bullet and Melanie deploy the water vacuum, Steve explains how he turned his hotel room into an indoor spa. Uh, doing some washing uh, tonight. Put a piece of my clothing on a coat hanger. Hung it over, and I've got the hanger. I must have got it in the middle. Just touched it, and it just exploded. And there was just water everywhere. Steve might be a guest in the hotel, 
but he's not shirking mop-up duties. So how long are you need for? Uh, probably a couple more hours. <laughs> Everybody's happy. I'm happy. The boys are happy. I don't know about the occupant of the room. He should be happy. I hope he's got travellers in charge. <laughs> Back at Swaddlings, staff have turned up to work, only to watch their jobs going up in flames. Because all the walls are, are pretty suctly unsound, you can see that they're cracking, they could fall down at any time. So they're going to put us up out of the collapse zone and try and put some water on and get the fire out. The fireys can't get anywhere near the flames. The focus is on containment. They can't save the hardware store, but they can try to stop the fire from spreading. There are high-rise apartment blocks and businesses on all sides. Troy's a fair distance from the flames, but when a fire's this big, you can't physically get any closer. I can actually feel the heat from here. So up there, it's probably about 800 degrees. It's got to turn away, it's getting that hot. It's coming straight through this. Oh, yeah. Yeah, straight through the pants. The fire isn't just creating chaos on the ground. It's down the road from Sydney's busy international airport. Um, the airport authorities have been able to divert aircraft away from the smoke plume. Because of the wind direction, it's not a great hazard, hazard to them. In the city centre, the Swadlands hardware store is burning out of control. We've just had a major wall collapse. Um, that's actually going to help us to extinguish the fire and get to the seat of the fire. We had to pull firefighters back. As you can see, it was a major danger if they were close to that. We expected that to happen. That'll start to happen right around the building. Access to the fire has been a problem from the start. But with the main wall now down, the fireys have a chance to get on top of the situation. We've got the, uh, about, through the minor, about 3,000 litres a minute of water. We're just trying to knock down this wall to prevent it collapsing any further. So we can get it down, so we can get to the seat of the fire behind the wall, it's collapsed. They train their hoses along the fault line. They want the wall to collapse inwards, but the old building stubbornly resists the pressure. There's, what, four aerials and eight lines. Not enough. I was cooking dinner, reheating some um, uh, carrot sausages. Trouble is, when you put the water in, it all spills up. That's a fair bit there. When Captain Cooks guaranteed the bells will go off. Sorry, can I help you? We're over in Bullard. Just behind the cafes, there's a really bad, bad smell, you know? Smell of? I don't know if it's gas or what. It's really, really bad. A gas leak is always dangerous, even more so when the report comes from a busy restaurant precinct. Uh, we're off to a smell of gas, so what I've got to do is just get my gas detector ready. Hello, uh, boys. What have we got? Mate, we've got a bad, bad smell. We had about 150 people that just went and just came through here. You can smell it on Bill Road. We've got a gas detector. The smell is so strong, it's putting people off their dinner. I mean, there's about six cafes here, and I've all packed down within five minutes, everyone just disappeared, you know. Station 15 needs to find the source. Okay, what does it smell like? Oh, really, really bad. It's got a bit of gas and like cheesy. LPG. And big cheesy, too, you know. We'll have a, a sniff around. And when it came over, it was just like uh, very, very blinding. I offer it might be a chemicalised fatty smell. I mean, I, I can't describe it. I mean, the fat is my, my opinion. It's a heavy smell can, can uh, devastate any human being. It's true, it's fact. The fireys are starting to wonder if they've taken leave of their senses, most particularly their sense of smell. There it is. Take some readings up and down there. I can smell something. God knows what it smells like, though. Six hours on, and the Swaddlings hardware store is little more than an empty shell. 
It's taken a hundred firefighters and most of the day, but the worst is now over. Unbelievably, the fire didn't spread beyond the one block. Well, it's uh, cooled down a lot now. It's, uh, it was very hot up there to start, but it's mostly contained now, and there's just a few little pockets of fire through the back section that they're uh, moving all the plants in to get out. At last, <laughs> Troy can take a breather, and straight away, he spots a familiar face. I'm, I'm glad they started saying Firefighter Troy Ingle over the radio yeah, rather than calling for Firefighter Ingle. I didn't know which one they were talking about. I've been a fireman for about six years now. And I've been in it for about three. It's a great job, both like uh, helping people, helping the community. It's good to be here. This is the first job we've ever been to that we've been working together. The blaze isn't out yet, but it is under control. A big fire like this one will smoulder for days. Extinguishing every last ember will be a round-the-clock job, but not for 62. We're all finished here. We've been sent back to Bankstown. Fire crews are going to be here for most of today, maybe into tonight, just finishing mopping it all up. But uh, it's still burning on the other side, so we'll head back to the station and uh, get ready for the next one. It smells, yeah, it smells like the stuff you used to do book mining with. Animal glue, yeah. No, nothing. Gas, cheese, glue, animal fat, a toxic spill. 15 has no idea what the smell is or where it's coming from. I can smell out that end too. Yeah. Next stop, the stormwater drain. This is a four sensor detector. It detects uh, oxygen deficiency. It also detects um, probably the most important element, which is a lower explosive limit. So therefore, if there's a combustible gas, no matter what it is, we'll detect it. OK, I might give, um, give BA, BA a call. After an hour chasing their tails and their noses, Kevin calls in the hazmat big guns. Well, I'd like to know what the smell is. Nothing reading there. The odour is as offensive as it is elusive. Yeah, we might move everyone back into the restaurant if we could, thanks. Crew 15 still searching for that offensive odour. Hazmat reinforcements arrive. Well, we've got a bit more information now. They've had this um, smell about four times over the last few months. We've opened up a drain and we thought we could smell it coming out of there for a while. We're only guessing that that's the source of it. Doesn't, there's nothing flowing down there that we can see. Suddenly, they pick up the scent again. A bit of a smell around that thing. Okay. We think that's a grease trap. Okay. Station 15 thinks it's onto a hot lead. Hello, how are you going? Good, thanks. This is your grease trap here, correct? Yes. It, it hasn't been pumped out in the last couple of days, you know? No, 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 no. Frankly, we don't do anything about bad smells, just dangerous ones. Just run like this general vicinity and we'll try that thing on the drain as well. I don't really care what it is. As long as they can check it out and say it's just a bad smell and not a dangerous smell, then I'm a happy man. What is it a risk, buddy? Suddenly, the hunt switches from gas to gastronomy. And you cooked it tonight, did you? Yeah. So that's a concentrated thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you had a lot of that before? The yes, smell isn't well, so well. much a red herring as red yes, chilli paste. But Kevin isn't about to rub the chef's nose in it. Yeah. It's no worries. No, there's nothing to be embarrassed about. Hey, look, we're happy we know. No, 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 we know what it is. And so, OK, then. Thank you. Uh, we have found out that a local restaurant was doing some cooking and we think that it was the, uh, the smell of making some fairly strong paste for, for future cooking. So we found out what the smell is now, so we're just going to pack up and head on home. The recipe has since been taken off the menu. Strike a pose, snap my photo. Now the boys from 88 are TV stars. The glossy magazines want photos. Strike a pose, wield a hose, there's something about that uniform, apparently. A bit of fun and games to kick off the shift, but the boys will have their work cut out for them tonight. Fire brigade. Are you putting a fire up? What's on fire? Um, on the house. Is anyone inside the house? Uh, it's 1.30 in the morning and we're off to a house fire. 
A house fire is raging in a residential neighbourhood. There's no word yet if there's anyone at home. Because at time is usually a chance that there could be people inside asleep, so. 88 is the second crew on the scene. But Brent and Josh are the first ones in, checking to see if there's anyone trapped. The for sale sign lets the fireys know the house has no permanent residence. But there are a lot of squatters in the area, and this is the kind of place they like to camp. Brent and Josh are deep inside the burning house, searching for squatters. It's getting more and more dangerous, but there's still a whole section of the house they haven't been able to reach. The fleet crew's inside, three lengths of 38 more hose, and we've got two lines of water coming into the truck. So uh, the boys are working hard trying to get this one down. It's too dangerous to push any further into the building. Brent and Josh must fight the fire head on, blasting water through the roof and hoping the ceiling doesn't end up collapsing on them. We are up at 20, let's go. 62 has just returned from the hardware store blaze and their shift is still a few hours from over. Oh, we can do 20 bench press mugged up. All right, good control. Fires need to be in good physical shape for days like this. So every city station is equipped with a gym. Three, three. Four, one more, here we go. Mugda even has his own personal trainer. Louis was a fitness instructor before joining the brigade. Well done. Good effort. Someone trying to put it out with a hose. Uh, do you know if anyone's home? They're very near trying to put it out. And my husband's trying to help them as well. Halfway through a workout, mate. Um, all of us were actually. Uh, so, we've already got a warm up for the job, so we'll see what happens when we get there. 62's first job of the day was a huge challenge, but they were only fighting to save property. When the call is a house fire, it means there could be lives at risk. They arrive to find Raylene and Tina on the front porch. They're coughing uncontrollably. Louis realises they need oxygen urgently. Hey, Bobby, can you get your oxyviver off? Raylene's struggling to breathe, but Tina's also inhaled a dangerous amount of smoke. You're going to have to have it on your face. This oxygen's going to help you. I couldn't breathe. I couldn't get out of the house. I couldn't get That's out right. of the house. Listen, listen, listen. listen. Right. Yeah. Take so normal breaths, fire. normal breaths. Small. Right. Just small, normal breaths. You'll be all right. Just normal. And it'll make you feel better. You At the moment, we've, we've just got him on some uh, oxygen, trying to uh, calm him down. One of the ladies is a little bit hysterical. We're just trying to calm her down, give her some oxygen until the ambos get here. Um, otherwise, the fire's all out. Breathing in deep, both of you. Breathe in really deep. Yeah. What was the fire on? Couch. The fire was started by a cigarette. Raylene and Tina had nodded off. The couch went up in a flash. Pretty lucky. Could have been worse. The whole house could have uh, gone. So, um, yeah, smoke detectors probably saved the day. So. The ladies are still dazed and confused when the Ambos arrive. Good. Uh, Raylene? Yep. <coughs> so we've got a problem breathing. Come down to the ambulance and we'll check you out down in the car. All right? OK. I'll give you a hand to stand up. Ready? <coughs> One, two, three. I'll walk you down to the ambulance. You all right? Hold on tight. You all taking her, are you? 
Smoke inhalation is serious, especially for an asthmatic like Raylene. But there's no law that says people have to accept medical help, however badly it may be needed. They don't want to go to hospital, even though they've been recommended to go to hospital, and they should, because they really have sucked in a lot of poisonous gas. Um, but they're refusing, they're going to stay. Yes. It seems the ladies have other plans for the rest of their day. There could be squatters trapped inside this burning building, but Brent and Josh can't continue their search until the fire is under control and the building's safe. The best way to reach the flames is through the roof. Uh, but at the moment, the house is fully involved. We, we won't protect that. It's, it's just about you know, gone, but we'll protect the garage. At last, the fire is under control, and Brent and Josh can access the rear of the house. It's all clear. The house is empty. Hold the door. Thank you, Josh. Crew 92, the first arriving, stays for the mop-up while the boys head back to station. I'll tell you when we're going. You don't tell me what's going on, right? Or well, so drive they think. You want to drive home in the truck? Or do you want to go in the ambulance? Let's go, old man. What do you want? As I said, I'll tell you when you're going. Uh, we're tell going. Mate. Hey, tell me. <laughs> Have a look here. What's it? Two months on, and the Swaddling's furniture fire has been declared an accident. At present, the assessment of this fire is it's accidental. Um, there is no suspicious circumstances to it, but you can see that it appears that it may have been a small fire, and from a small fire, we can have this much devastation. Yeah, that's great, yeah. The crew from 88 weren't the only ones roped into a magazine shoot. Station 27, and these are some of your best shots. You're looking sexy, bull. Here's 62's official happy snap. And finally, here's Rescue 15's hero shot. Now, search and rescue. 